Welcome back to the University of Queensland School of Architecture introductory series on Rhino and Grasshopper. In this routine we're going to be um, doing a hypothetical tool which will be the construction of our lift cores. Now the thing with a lot of um, Grasshopper routines is that the value comes in constructing uh, various um, subroutines which can be sort of deployed as tools within a whole bunch of, of other um, routines that in essence are sort of the uh, combination of uh, different I guess subroutines. Now in this instance what I'm going to try and do is set up a um, lift core that is variable in its dimension but also it responds to the height of the building so as we know um, lifts in in a in a tall building um, there would typically be a low rise set of lifts a medium set of medium rise set of lifts and a high rise set of lifts so what I'm going to try and do here is try and um, establish that um, as a routine now the seed file of this is called variable core. Now all it is ostensibly is a single point um, at the origin of our Rhino file which is set up as a large template in millimeters. So I'm going to, to start a new document and the first thing I'm going to do is um, put in my point variable. So there we have it. I'm going to select my point in Rhino set one point. Okay, so everything's going to be pretty much built off this point here. Now, first thing I'm going to do is um, define the, the edge of uh, my first, well, a standard core. The routine assumes that each core will be the same size because we'll be just duplicating this um, base uh, core geometry. Now, don't forget that red is X um, direction, green is Y, and blue is Z. So I'm going to just set up a couple of points. Um, now I'll pull up a number slider and I'll start it off with a with a big value and I'll copy that and I'll rename this the core length. Oops, sorry I'm in the wrong core length. Um, I'll do a maximum of uh, 15 for this one because and we'll call this one core width and we'll give this one another big val bigger value 15,000 okay so what I'm simply going to do is duplicate this point Oopsie daisy. To uh, to define the corners of this rectangle. So with the the core length, I'm just going to do a move command. So I'll call up move. Copy paste. I'm going to need a in this direction. I'm going to do the length this way. So that's an x x direction vector, and for the width going this way so I'll do a y direction vector for that so I'll plug this into the translation vector uh, there we go that and that and the point will be the seed through there okay now I'll just expand that out so we can see what we're doing. So there's our two points there. So if I just dial up my core width to say something, so if we do a bank of three lifts, it's typically about nine by three. So there you can see there's our three corner points which will define our core. So I'm going to do a rectangle with three points. So I'll um, Pull in A as our seed, B, C, there's our rectangle, and I'm going to show that as a surface, boundary surface, and there's our rectangle. So there's our core. Now the beauty of this is that 
you know, we could just draw a rectangle for the core, but if we want to have good control over our design, you know, not only do we want to be able to control the height, but, you know, if in our tool, if we wanted to have a smaller lift core, but more of them, this gives us the flexibility to do that. So, I'm going to put in uh, a few more uh, variables um, to do with the number of stories and the height. So, I'll... That's probably a bit too big for what I want. Um, okay, and so this is going to be my floor to floor height. Okay. And I'll do um, number of levels. Number of... I'll just do levels. Levels. Okay. There we go. So, the the height of um, w what I'll do first is I'll I'll do the height of the core, and what what ostensibly I'm going to do is generate the core, but then do a scaling factor for it depending on where it is um, in the um, if it's a mid rise, high rise, and so on. So I'll put in because we'll duplicate the cores this way as well, I'll put in another couple of number sliders. Um, and we'll call this one spacing, spacing of cores. Okay. And the next one will be... Um, we'll, do, we'll do this as, as a... As a, that scale. Um, now, oh, I'll just put so floors uh, serviced per lift core. Okay. So, what this will do here is that this will duplicate the cores um, side by side, and this will be the determinant of you know whether it's a hundred floors serviced by the core or no, well, clearly it can't be no, none, but, you know, this gives us the flexibility of being able to say one bank of lifts will service 15 cores, and because we can adjust the core length, say if we um, dial that up to 12, then that would assume that it was another lift, and then that way we can actually increase this number as well, so that the number of jumps changes. So there's a fair amount of flexibility to tailor what we need, and with input from our uh, lift engineer. So what I'll do first, I'll just do the height of the cores. So um, I'll do a multiplication first. Okay. So that'll be the floor to floor height, um, the number of floors. Okay. Now, let's do a scaling factor to, to do a conditional where um, it v generates a number based on the number of levels and the number of floor service per lift core. Now I'm going to just dial that up a little bit higher. Now if the number of levels is, is shorter than um, the number of floors serviced by the lift core, the routine will probably break, but we'll see how we go. Okay, I'm going to do a divisor. So we'll do the number of levels as the number we'll divide into, and the floors serviced per lift. Okay, so what we'll do is we'll get a rounding value here, and we'll plug that into there, and we'll get a panel here, and we'll see what it's saying here. So you can see, according to the relationship through here, we'll need three lift cores, but as we sort of dial this down, you know, it sort of varies according, so it, it doesn't scale sort of incrementally, it sort of factors in um, kind of like a, a group or blocking sort of um, uh, filtering, but let's just pop that over there. 
So, we'll go here to the height of the core. So the height of the core is going to be determined by the overall height, so the maximum according to this, and our rounding factor that we've just, or our scaling factor through here. So we'll divide that by 3. So effectively, because we need, it's telling us here that we've, we need four cores, this will be you know, a factor of, of a quarter of the size of a like a full-scale core. So what we'll do now is we might just actually leave it there and we'll pick up this routine again in the next uh, video. Thanks.